Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. I got my GM 2.4 liter LD9 engine. This is quad 4 LD9 out of a 99 Pontiac Grand Am. I'm doing a complete rebuild on it. In the last video, we got the head put on. Now it's time to get these camshafts in and get them torqued down and get everything sealed up on top of the head. We're going to get started right now. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that the pistons are in the middle of the engine. I think they're about in the middle of the engine now. Um, and so, what I'm going to do is put a screwdriver here in number one. And I'm just going to bring this engine back counterclockwise and see if that piston comes up, and it does. So this little keyway pin here, straight up, is top dead center. Yep. So we want to go 90 degrees. This doesn't need to be rocket science. It just needs to be turned clockwise 90 degrees. R roughly. So I'm just going to go even where the block is right there. It's about 90 degrees. Now all the pistons are in the middle. That way when we put the cam in, we don't risk a valve getting pushed down into one of the pistons being at the top. Then once the cams are in, and the camshaft cover and everything's installed with the sprockets, we'll bring those around and put the dowel pins in to hold them where they're supposed to be, and then bring that back counterclockwise to top dead center on number one. So we'll go through that all when we get there again. So now we're ready to go ahead and start getting our camshaft towers installed. Okay, so what we're going to do... Here is uh, get all of these intake uh, parts put on the intake side of the motor. Um, as you can see, I've got everything laid out. Um, move that. I've got my upper and lower camshaft housing, my lower camshaft gasket. There is a dowel pin from something. <laughs> um, then I've got my upper gaskets. These are my lifters, and these are all of my bolts, different kinds that went to the intake. <coughs> okay, so the first thing I want to do here is just get some brake clean on my towel and just go over everything and make sure it's clean there's no oily residues or anything on here uh, these gaskets have a tendency to leak over time on these engines so the best chance I can get of it sealing is what I want so I want to make sure these are clean and dry when these go on it looks really good to me so now we're just going to put our gasket on here, right there, and right there. And that's all installed. So now we're ready to go ahead and put our lower cam tower on. Okay, so now I'm ready to get this cam tower on. I'm just going to get a little brake clean and clean this off as well. Make sure it's nice and dry and clean. Looks good. I'm just going to go ahead, set it down in place. And then I want to tap that down onto this dowel pen gently. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just put a couple of bolts in to hold it. Um, and just kind of thread them in a little just so nothing bad happens and it falls out these will have to come off again before we can put this cover on but this will make sure it's secure enough while we're putting the cam in that nothing falls okay so I am going to go ahead and just clean 
these cam journals with a little brake clean. Make sure there's no dirt in those or grit, grime, and no pieces of red towel. Just make sure those are good and clean. As clean as possible. And then we'll do the same thing for the camshaft. I'm just going to double check because I put an eye right there for intake. And just make sure that these journals are good and clean. And especially these bearing surfaces. Now what I'm going to do is grab my assembly prelude and put a little bit down here in these races, just a, a little drop on each one. And then I'll just kind of spread that around a little with my finger. It's okay if a little oozes out. It's not going to hurt a thing. Okay, so now that these bearing surfaces are all lubed real good, and um, we're just going to go ahead and take and put our lifters in. I'm just going to put a little drop of oil on these. Kind of move it around a little. And we're going to go ahead and slide these down in here, just like so. And move you up a little closer so you can see. Okay, so I put a little pre-lube on this camshaft here. So we're just going to go ahead and basically drop this down. Now, if you're wondering which end is which, there's one end that's threaded and one end that's not. The end that's threaded is going to go to the front of the motor. So that's where your sprocket goes. And then this little thing fits in this actual little groove right here and so I'm just going to fit that in there that's a where you can get it kind of as close as possible to the things everything being neutral we'll try a couple of other positions here well, that's kind of it so I'm just going to put some more assembly prelude on <laughs> everything All right can't have too much
good. And so I was going to clean off these edges right here a little bit. Now these gaskets that go in between are rubber for this housing so it doesn't have to be a spotless connection because they're rubber gaskets. So here's that. Basically we just got to put our gaskets in here. So let me show you here. Get this one gasket that's got the two like bolts side by side so you can tell that that's the one that goes right here and you're just going to take and push them down in the little groove and then we have the other gasket I'm showing here it's just going to go right down here in this groove pretty straightforward so let me sit that to the side for a second now we're just going to make sure that this is not going to slide off and it's not. We're going to take these bolts out. I'm going to slide my top cover on. Make sure this gasket's pushed down in place really good. <laughs> Stay in there. Okay, so what I gotta do now is just take each of these bolts out and the book calls for putting Loctite on the thread and right here. Now we're just gonna put a little bit right here. So what I'm going to do is just bring it snug.
Okay, now we're ready to start torquing them down and get them angled in. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead. These all need to be torqued down to 16 foot pounds. There's your torque sequences. Um, if you're doing this job and you need this document, just email me. You can find it under my about. Um, but I already went through and torqued them once, so I'm just going to go through and double check them back in sequence now. So we got one. Then two. What you want is one of these bright mark uh, paint markers. I'll put a link to it down in the description. But then just come here and make a mark on your bolt and the engine, like so, on each of these. And then you'll know when you've turned it 90 degrees because these marks will not align. And each one of those has a mark. It's very visible. Yep. So that way I'll let that dry and that way if I'm like did I turn that one or not I can quickly see if the marks line up. I haven't angled it in. Because um, like I told you in the head video there's no way to go back and double check if you angled it. Like you can go back and double check torque but you either angled it or you didn't. If you didn't you're screwed. <coughs> And if you did and you do it again, you're going to snap a bolt and you're screwed. So that's just a little insurance. Alright, so what I've done here, if you can see, is um, I've marked on here the zero degree spot. And then this is 30 degrees for the small bolts. And then this is 90 over here. So that way I can see these marks real clearly. And then I can clean those off when I'm done if I want to. So you can see where I messed up and I accidentally did number 10 when I was supposed to do 7. Those paint marks really saved my butt. If I had gone and turned that another 90, because I had lost track, I could have snapped the bolt off. <coughs> if I had gotten way off, I might have loosened them back up and redone it. But um, just being on two opposite ends when you're going back and forth is going to be fine. It's going to be stretched down nice and even. So, now we're ready to work on the exhaust side. Alright, so I've already gone ahead and 
cleaned the gasket and all these surfaces off real good with brake clean off camera. So we're going to go ahead and get our gasket set down in place. Go ahead and set our cam tower into place. And go ahead and get a couple of bolts started in her. Alright. Oh, sorry about bumping the camera there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my pre lube and just uh, lube down all these journals. Let me go ahead and wipe these off with the towel and we'll break them first. The camera's about gone.
Okay, everything looks good there. Go ahead and get these torqued down. Now your torque specs, at least it says in the manual, are different from the intake side for the exhaust side. So I'm going to look up the specs and make sure what they are here. Okay, so these bolts go to 11 foot-pounds. We're going to go by this order over here, which is the exhaust housing. You can tell because the intake housing has these two extra bolts in the back. And uh, we're just going to follow our torque sequence and torque these all down to 11 foot-pounds. Alright, so I guess that is how you install the cam towers and cams and cam covers on these. Uh, kind of a bit of a crazy process because you kind of have to compress the valve springs a little bit as you get all this on because there's no complete dead spot. Um, and keep everything lined up and working. And, you know, it just it is what it is. But uh, a little trickier than I thought it would be. But we got it done. So now we're ready to get our timing cover on. And then we'll get uh, the cams in time and pinned. And we'll get the uh, timing chain in. I'll talk to y'all later. It's Tom, your Frugal Prepper. Be happy, Frugal. Go rebuild an engine.